I want to share with you my day word for today, the word that, for those who don't know, it's words that we write at the beginning of the year, for every day, in advance, for the whole year. And the word for today is 1 Corinthians 7, 8, 9, and 10. Also a few things written, but scripture-wise, it's these specific chapters. Hallelujah. So, I'm sharing with you a few thoughts from every chapter, what I believe is for us as a church. I'm going to start with 1 Corinthians 7, verse 23. For those who are writing down, it can be great. You men there on the other side, can you please come and sit here? That will help us a lot, you know, in many ways. Thank you. 1 Corinthians 7, verse 23. You were bought at the price. Do not become slaves of men. You were bought with a price. Do not become slaves of men. My brother, my sister, many times we have a perspective of when somebody would say, I'm a slave of men. It's just like, I must just do whatever they ask of me to do. And everybody is using me and everybody is wanting me to do a lot of stuff. But I'm not a slave of man. That's not at all what it is talking about. You were bought with a price, therefore don't become slaves of men. You count yourself as cheap if you will bow down before the issues of men and because of that determine where you will give yourself and where you will not give yourself. Hallelujah. You are with me? Are you with me? It's not about you giving yourself and saying yes to people. There's a yes to people what you can do in performance. But God says because you know you're not cheap. You are with excellence. You are with excellence. Hello? That's why you can give yourself as if unto the Lord. As if unto the Lord. You with me? Good day. You with me? Let's go with a few verses just before that. Verse 20. Let each one remain in the same calling in which he was called. Let each one remain in the same calling in which he was called. Were you called while a slave? Do not be concerned about it. So even if you are, your title is slave, don't be concerned about it. But if you can be made free, rather use it. For he who is called in the Lord while a slave is the Lord's freedom, free man. You are freed, you are a free man. If you understand that what you do, you do as if unto the Lord. Even if your title is slave on earth. You are free if you do what you do as if unto the Lord. Likewise, he who is called while free is a slave of Christ. So my brother, my sister, slave you will be. A slave to your flesh, slave to your opinion. Basically, the, the context of slave is not slavery in the context of curse. It's a curse when you are a slave from your flesh and from the world. Hello? Where you do it in performance. But when you do what you do as if unto the Lord, you are free. You are free. You are always free. And then the word says, therefore, because you were bought with a price, because you are precious, because you don't have a cheap life. It cost God his only son, begotten son. Hello? It cost him everything. So your life is not cheap. The life that you have in Christ is not cheap. It's for free, but it's not cheap. It's for free because it's God's grace. Hello? 
It's for free, but it's not cheap. You can write that down. It's for free, but it's not cheap. You treat yourself as being cheap. You have a cheap life. If I can moan or groan or have an issue with, you know, they expect of me to do this and they expect of me to do that and they want me to do this and they want me to do that. Hello? Instead of, what I do, I do as if unto the Lord. I'm not super spiritual, but I'm free to do his will. I'm free to worship him. Because on earth I learn the sentence, in spite of, still I will. In spite of what I feel, I will still worship him. In spite of what I feel, I will still love him. In spite of what I feel, I will still give myself with excellence. I will still give myself with excellence. Or I don't feel a lacquer today, so I... And your heart wanders off and the commitment is gone because you're a slave of sin. You're a slave as a curse. No, it will not be in Jesus' name. Be a slave of Christ. Are you with me? That's the first part. I'm going to read that again. Let each one remain in the same calling in which he was called. So you can be called to be a slave with a title slave. You can be called to have the title CEO. You can be called to have the title the boss of, of the big business. But in all circumstances, be a slave of Christ. And that's what slave has to do with, I will be controlled. I'm controlled. A slave means I'm controlled. They say, no, I'm not a slave. Okay, you will not be controlled by the word of God, by the Holy Spirit, by the Father's will. Okay. But freely and willingly I give myself to be controlled by God's word, by his principles, by his heart, by his will for my life. Are you with me? Or you say, please, circumstances, come and control me. Please, circumstances, or what how the people are, what they do, what they do right, what they do wrong with me. That will control me. That's a curse. That's you treating your life as cheap. But because you are not cheap, but precious, bought with a price, the, 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 the price from heaven. Therefore, walk in the freedom that God has given you. The freedom to be a slave of Christ doesn't matter your title on earth. Amen. Ach, give me an amen. First sermon. Second sermon. 1 Corinthians 8, verse 1. Now concerning things offered to idols, we know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love edifies. God says, it's good that you can know a lot of things. It's not first of all about that. It's about a love relationship. Love is between people. First of all. Are you with me? Because of love, God wanted what? A relationship. So love and relationship, it's connected. For the relationship, it says, for God so loved that he gave. To have the relationship. Because he created you for the relationship. For you to worship, to wow about him. Worship that has to do with progressively coming closer and closer and closer and closer. And I say to you progressively things. There will not be a boring day if you can call it a day in heaven. Every next form of type of second you will just wow more about who he is for eternity. Just think about that. How for eternity you will always have a bigger wow the next moment. Awesome. Awesome. My God, help us to understand that. Knowledge puffs up, but love edifies. You can know a lot, but it's about the relationship. Oh, man. There's guys out there. 
There's guys out there from different religions, even guys in the religion of atheism, even Satanists. They know the Bible. They can know the Bible very well. The enemy came with the Bible, with the, with the with scripture to Christ in the, in the biggest temptation. Are you with me? But the whole thing is, do you know the word in the context of relationship? If you know the word in the context of the relationship, you will be able to stand. Because you will know his heart. You will know how to interpret knowledge in the context of his heart. When you know how to interpret information and knowledge in the context of his heart, you will always be free. Your life will edify. It will build. You will build a life that is from him. But that's knowledge in the context of relationship. Knowledge without a relationship, it just puffs up. It, you will grow. You will become full of pride or you will become into that place, an intimate relationship with him. But love works in the intimate worship relationships where you, we, as the people of God, can love him, can worship him. And he is pleased with that. Ah, oh, let it be so for my life. Amen? 1 Corinthians 9. 1 Corinthians 9. Verse 26 and 27. Therefore I run thus, not with uncertainty. Thus I fight not as one who beats the air. What are we talking about? My brother, my sister, you can have a fight with someone. You can have an issue in your heart with someone. Just, look, just think about the clown. You know, he's fighting, but he's huh, punching the air. Crazy. But why? Not anymore. Did we do it sometimes with people in your heart? Beating the air. Busy with a lot of stuff. In your heart, but it's, it's not from God. It's not from God. Are you with me? Thus I fight, not as one who beats the air. Therefore, there's a fight, yes. There's a fight, but you need to understand. The one that wants to destroy. Make sure you deal with it. But with fight, there's focus. Fight without focus is one clown skit. It's, it's one mess. Fight without focus. Right there. Fight with focus. You can write that down. Fight with focus. So that you will have success in that God, what God has for your life. But otherwise you are just fighting yourself. You're beating up yourself for what? That's destroying a life, man. God will help us. I run this, not with uncertainty. When you run, you do the 800 meters. You know about running, I think. And you run the 800 meters, and by the second round, I'm uncertain. Where must I go now? You're halfway around. but you, uh, Where must I run now? It's not pathetic. It's just crazy, eh? If we will have it like that. And so many times with our lives in the past, not in the future anymore, in Jesus' name. We run, but, and we are running, and you're having a busy day. Anybody of you had it? I had it. And you're very busy. And at the evening, in the evening, you are tired. Yeah. But what do you have to show for it? What can you see? What can you remember what you and Christ did together? What you guys did together with him? No, man. It will not be like that anymore in Jesus' name. When we sit, when we think of the word, when you take the word right now with discipline, with focus, that's when we change. That's why we see verse 27, but I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself would become disqualified. No, I'm not a preacher. Your life preaches. You are the light. You are the salt. What's that? You are preaching. 
you are preaching. You have a state of your life. And you are preaching if you like it or not. But you decide how the preaching would be. You decide if you will be deceived or not. You decide that people will look at you and decide, Christianity not for me. You decide that people will look at you and, and say, no, it's a lot of religion. God as a father. Is that what a father does? Hello? But for that it says, I discipline my body. Afrikaans and the other translations, I beat my body into subjection. So there's a fight even. And with this fist, I beat the flesh in my life into subjection. Are you with me? I beat my body. Please, not physically. It's craziness. We're talking about everything that is flesh in me. Aggressively, I'm going to deal with it. Aggressively, I will deal with the flesh in my life. That's I beat my body into subjection. I beat my body into subjection because aggressively, in, intentionally, I'm going to deal with my flesh. But if I don't deal with it, if there's not a focus, I want to deal with it, I want to, to fight this thing. What are you fighting if you don't know even it's there? Or if you don't know where the enemy is? But let Holy Spirit show you what is flesh in you so that with focus you can fight that thing. Otherwise, without focus you fight. What are you doing? You're hitting your head, you're hitting your fist against the wall. For what? Then against the chair. Then, ah, oh, one against the enemy. I have a testimony. And then where? In the air. Until you are so tired fighting. I'm so tired in this fight. Against what? You fought nothing. It was just all in the air. All against the wall. Fight with focus. My brother, my sister, don't waste your life. Let us not waste our lives. Amen? But may God help us. That you will just understand. You know, the enemy comes like this small bracky thing. <coughs> and the dog sitting there. He knows he has the authority. And at one stage he just, oh! And that one wolf, but that dog. <coughs> Are you with me? Don't be disturbed by the circumstances and the this and the this. Know who you are, like that Mr. Dog. Sitting there and just when he had enough and it's now not what it's supposed to be anymore. Just give that one boom, and that thing is gone. Fight with focus. That what is from the flesh. Oh, that works even further. Fight with focus the flesh. That's it. One Corinthians 9. Are we finished with that one? I always need to rush in the second service. Of course, I can see the intimidation in front of me. When some of you guys get very smiley, very friendly, I know it's not because you are friendly, necessarily. It's because some mouths they go sideways when the eyes go down. So don't get too smiley here. <laughs> okay. Chapter 10, verse 10 to 12. Nor complain, do not complain, as some of them, the Israelites, also complained and were destroyed by the destroyer. 1 Corinthians 10.10, 10, you can write there, John 10.10. 10. My brother, you're supposed to write down. Okay. Oh, it sounds like 10. 10 hours or something like that. <laughs> okay, I give grace this time. Oh, grace is discipline. Praise the Lord. In any case, John 10.10 10 is the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. 1 Corinthians 10.10, 10, you moan and you groan, you murmur. You give 
the destroyer the, de right, the right to destroy you. Are you with me? Complain as the rest complained, and they were destroyed by the destroyer. The one that will come. The enemy has the, he has the right to destroy you when you complain. No, but I must be honest. Yes, you must be honest. But what you do with your honesty is true repentance. And submit yourself then to the truth so that the truth can set you free. No freedom. No freedom. That's where slavery and you will be a slave as a curse. Unless your honesty is not going into moaning and groaning, but going into repentance, but I will honor the truth in spite of the facts. Facts, you better be honest. Because from that place of honesty, you are walking in the light. And in the place of light, God works because he is the light. There's no darkness in him. Amen. May God help you. May God help me. Amen. Not complain. Now all these things happened to them as examples and they were written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the ages have come. Therefore, everybody say therefore. therefore. Let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. Oh, New King James. Hallelujah. Let the man that thinks he's standing and let the man that realizes I'm standing, let the man that knows I'm standing, I'm standing, I'm standing with success, I'm standing with victory, I'm standing as an overcomer, I'm standing, I see breakthroughs. Great. Be careful that you don't fall. Not that you need to fear. Not that you must not walk by faith. Not that you must be double-hearted. Not that you must be uncertain. Be careful, be careful. No, no, no. Not to bring the fear, but to bring wisdom. And to understand what I have, I can stand because of grace and only because of grace. Only because of grace. Uh, are you with me? Only because of grace you can stand. Because you know what God has done in your life. But that's a place of thankfulness. When I know what I have is only grace, then I'm thankful. When you're truly thankful, not just good manners to say thank you, but from your heart, there's a thankfulness. It's because you know it's grace. If the revelation of grace is in you, thankfulness is a lifestyle. No genuine thankfulness if grace is not a revelation. You can write there. With grace as a revelation. Thankfulness is genuine, or you can say thankfulness is true. Thankfulness is coming from your heart. It's not fake. It's not fake. Then your thank you through your lifestyle is not fake. Because you know, I have this success, and I'm breaking through, and I'm running into destiny, and I'm living the dream, and I'm enjoying life because of grace. And that grace is not, some people, you've been given grace. Okay, thank you, thank you. It's not, no, it's supposed to be joy. Are you with me? Verse 23, 24. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but not all things edify. All things are lawful for me. Lawful, that means I can do whatever. I can go and slaughter. I can go and kill and steal. No, 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 no. All things are lawful according to the law, according to the word. You can do all the things. But all things are not to edify. It's not edifying. My brother... You can do all the right things and still break down. And still, because it's the thing at the wrong time. So when we are focusing on 
planting carrots. But the one of the two is the whole time just talking about the oranges, the oranges, this, and the oranges. You know, it's lawful for you to talk about the oranges, but it's not edifying. It's not helpful, the first one. It is really not helpful. And we're supposed to help one another. So it's not about what you know just. Remember the two chapters back? Knowledge puffs up. You can talk about the oranges and the this. Oh, just see how much he knows. You're not helpful. We're not focusing on that now. So he's talking about, you can talk about a lot of, lot of stuff, a lot of things you can do. But it's not helpful when he's at the wrong time. Are you with me? And then you want to push with this thing and it's not accepted. And then I get an offense or some immature thing, but my issue is with Christ, not with a person. Why? Because you put yourself under the curse of a slavery. Where well, you're supposed to be a slave, but you're supposed to do it because you do it as if unto the Lord. And when you do it for the Lord, the Lord, the Holy Spirit, will tell you how and in what way. Where to be silent, where to speak, where to do this, where to do that. Because you're a free man. You're a woman with freedom. But if I must justify certain things, why I will say no to this and why I say no to that, that doesn't mean you must say yes to everything everybody tells you. That's not what I'm saying. But what you do is not so that they say thank you. Yes, it's good manners. But your reward is from the Lord. You can have your reward here on earth. But the ones with the biggest reward is those that just did it for God. Doesn't matter the reaction of people. Doesn't matter if they responded so positively. Those are the guys with the real biggest reward in heaven. And reward is not how big is the trophy or how big is your crown. What we said even in the past once when I asked God about this concept about the crown is I could have this wow crown, but I put the wow down before his feet like the 24 elders that bowed before the throne of God and put their crowns down. What wow you could do here on earth with Christ, with God. The reward is you have such a big wow you can put down before him. Instead of, thank you, Lord, for your. Nobody will be belittled. Nobody is less than the other one. We will not even know that type of concept in heaven. Are you with me? But it's just your, our wow can be so much bigger. Are you with me? And the wow not about us, the wow about him. Let it be so in Jesus' name. Last ones now. Verse 23, 24. No, verse 24. Therefore, let no one seek his own, but each one the other's well-being. Yeah, but it's, it's also about you. How? When you lose your life, you'll find it. Because you do it for the Lord. You, you throw your la life into the good ground. You will have 30, 60, 100 fold harvest when you do it as if unto the Lord. Because God is faithful, God. He's faithful to his word, even in that context. Okay? But my brother, my sister, make sure that selfishness will not consume you. Because if the focus is on itself, that's a cell that is dying in this body that will. The cells of your skin, there's. How many million cells per whatever, hour, no, day, on your skin that dies and falls off? Hey, Mr. Doctor, how many? Oh, okay. Quite a lot. Let's say quite a lot, hey? Quite a lot. But the concept is when it goes on its 
own. The thing about dying is that it is not part of any more. But when it is part of, there's something about definition of life and being part of. But not being part of has to do with where death comes in. When we talk about body, and we are the body of Christ. Make sure you don't bring death in your own life because of doing own things. And then everything must fall off because there's death in it. It's like dead works. There's the life of Christ is not in it. God will help you. God will help me. So in the context of everything, I want to end off with this verse in chapter 10, verse 16. Talking about communion. It says, the cup of blessing which we bless. Is it not the communion of the Lord Jesus, of the blood of Christ? The bread that we break. Is it not the communion of the body of Christ? In, in the context of the cup of blessing. Is uh, from, let's call it the Greek, a context of thankfulness. In the Afrikaans vertaling, die beker van dank zeggen. Some of the other translations in English also. The blessing of, I can be thankful. And you bless even yourself when you are thankful. But when you are thankful, I want to bless you because I'm thankful. There is no blessing towards the Lord if you are not grateful and thankful for what you received. So when you partake in communion, your heart must be with such a lot of gratitude and thankfulness towards what he has done for you. Amen. And with that place, that can only come from a place of humility. The one that stands must be careful that he don't fall. There's no pride, but there's humility. There's humility. There's no thankfulness if it's not coming from a heart in humility. Because you know that you know it's not you. It's only because of God's grace. And if humility is in you, you will see you will have so much more grace with people. Even with their mistakes. You'll have so much less that you must work through with people. When grace is alive in you and humility. That doesn't mean some people can just walk over me. That's not what I'm saying. But that's what I can have in God. Because I'm a worshiper of Him. Not a worshiper. Not, I'm not responding when everything is right around me. If you only respond when everything is right around you. What about yourself? Where it goes wrong many times is we are in performance sometimes that I must do everything right. But when I'm in, perform, in, in a thing of I must just do everything right and I must not be in trouble, I'm not worshiping God. My problem is not with that person. To do everything right with that person. Otherwise I'm going to be in trouble. The problem is not with the person. The problem, God is using the person to show you something in your life that you're not worshiping Him as the Primary focus. Praise God for that person. <laughs> Are you with me? That guy, is, is, he must sort it out with the Lord when he's in the wrong, when he's doing wrong. Yes. But your worship is because you have an intimate relationship with him. With him. Love that edifies, not first the knowledge of who's right and who's wrong. As we are with one another. May God help you, my brother. Help you, my sister. That we will be slaves according to the freedom that God is giving us. If I can put it like this. You're a free man to be a slave. You are free to become a slave of Christ. He has set you free to become his slave. And if he didn't set you free, you will not, would not be able to become his slave. 
but you'll be the slave of those who will destroy you, destroy you, destroy you, destroy you. Because in the moaning, it's I, will, I honor the impact of everything around me, except Christ. Because when I, impact, when I honor the impact that God has in my life, thankfulness. When I honor the impact that circumstances and people have on my life in a negative way, hello, there's no honor. It's focused on me. I'm not worshiper in spirit and truth. But that is not part of our lives anymore. Because remember, as we speak, you are breaking through. You hear truth, you take it right now, you change. You not walk out here, yes, I, I'm supposed to do that, yes. I'm supposed to do that, yes, that's right. It's not for us to sit and with one another and just to identify what's right and what's wrong. That's not the primary thing in hearing the word. It's not even, I must. So you can go out here with so much more performance and yokes that you've put on yourself. I must, I must, I'm supposed to, I must, I must, I'm supposed to. No, not I must, do it right now. When you hear that word, I take that in Jesus' name. I repent of this and I go into this now. I will be that person. I will do this. I will do this. You speak it into your life. You build it in your life while sitting here. The one go out here with ten more yokes of performance in religion. The other one walks out here with freedom. I'm not talking just about on a Sunday when we come together. I'm talking about whenever you have time with the word. Whenever you are in worship. Whenever you are in prayer. Whenever you are talking to God. In... Uh, Prayer life, even us as a family, when we pray, I realized, and I had to change even in the church with this. When I would say, and, and where scripture says, I will praise you, I will worship you. That is a decision that I will. So where does that decision come from? It's somebody preaching to somebody. I will. It's my spirit telling my soul, this will be your decision. You will worship the Lord. It's my spirit telling my soul, my emotions, my intellect, my storm, my fight. And you will worship the Lord. I want to praise you, Lord. I want to worship you. Okay? Then worship. Not just I want to. So God challenged me with a wording even in that. To say, Lord, I love you. I worship you. I adore you. I will serve you. No, no, I serve you. Thank you for your grace that I can say today, I serve you and that I will serve you in the future. But do the now word. I realize even in the songs that we sang, it's right. But we need to facilitate more the fact of there, that song, I remember in the first service even. That is my spirit speaking to my soul. Like David said, soul, why are you downcast? You will praise the Lord. So my brother, my sister, please. Let the word bring division between what is spirit and what is soul. Two-edged sword. And that is what the word will do. So that you can live as a child of God. Even though that guy out there can have a major success. Your spirit is reborn. And then from your spirit, take the gold that is in your spirit and put it, put your soul in alignment. Put your emotions, your intellect, what you think, what you plan. Put it in alignment so that you will make the right decisions. And then you make the right decisions. Are you with me? Bring it into the first person. And then do it. Do it from your spirit. Not just preach to your soul. Because otherwise you go out here with a lot of preaching, but you, you didn't change things. But when you walk out here, soul must be in so much more alignment with what is in your spirit. Because I don't put something in your spirit more than what is already there. 
God is just using the preaching to open up what is already in your spirit because the fullness of God is dwelling in your spirit. But it's your choice to open it up or allow it to be opened up for you what is in here so that soul can be aligned so that your life can have an excellence in it with Christ because you are not cheap. You are bought with a price. I end off with the first sentence. This is my day word for today. But to end off with that first sentence, you are not cheap. Paul explaining all this stuff to the church. And why will you do that? Because, because you were bought with a price. God help us to see not what people and circumstances will tell us if we are a success or if we are a failure, if we are cheap or not. God, but we choose to agree with you. And you are the one saying that we were bought with a price. You are saying we are precious, Lord. We submit to your truth. Let it explode from our spirit into our lifestyles, Lord. We trust you for that. We pray for each one. Hearing the message, each one here. God, that you'll just do a major, major work in our lives. We honor you. We thank you for who we can be, who we can be. Forgive us for negativity or moaning or groaning and having fight beating in the air, having fights in our hearts. And then we get tired, Lord, and it's because we are busy with our own struggles that we're supposed to just lay down. Forgive us. For that inner fighting, Lord. Come and let your peace that goes beyond all understanding. Just arrest us. Take control. By making us your slaves. We are giving you the control. That you will control, control, control our bodies. Control our lives, Lord, with your word, with your spirit, with your guidance. We choose that. We will not be enslaved to the world as if we are cheap. No, we want to be your slaves. We want to be controlled by you in every day. Please, by your grace, come and take control. I pray that for every man, every woman here, no control by fear, performance, religion, or any other rubbish in Jesus' name, but set us free. Each one of us, Lord, set us free by your truth. That we will walk in the honor to be a slave of Christ. Help us to focus in that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.